Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be answering the question of how Milky Way Galaxy formed. We're going to, I guess in some sense, reverse engineer it using one of the recent studies. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. Modern astronomers were able to find the answers to a lot of different questions. For example, today we have a pretty good understanding how planets form, how star systems form, even how our own moon formed. However, when it comes to the formation of galaxies and specifically the formation of our own Milky Way, there's very, very limited data. This is actually one of the few simulations um, created by the Caltech approximately five years ago, where they simulated a potential way the Milky Way galaxy was created from very smaller dwarf galaxies. This is over a period of approximately 13.8 billion years. And here you'll see that the shape will start forming relatively soon and you'll see the familiar disk shape as well. Now, this is not exactly satisfactory though, because it doesn't really use any observation of the galactic formations and also galactic shapes and stars and global clusters we already have in the universe. So this is why the scientist who wrote this paper that you can find it in the description below decided to do just that. He decided to focus on what we actually see and what we know and try to reverse engineer of how it may have appeared there. But how could you possibly reverse engineer a galaxy, especially from within the galaxy itself? What could you possibly use to try to, I guess in some sense, guesstimate, or in this case scientifically guesstimate, what and how some of the parts were combined here? Well, if you look really closely, and especially if you increase the amount of stars visible to us, you might notice that there are actually a lot of really bright objects located in the so-called halo of the galaxy, essentially the area around the galaxy, not in the disk itself. If I come a little bit closer, you'll see them even better. And there's actually a lot of them, there's hundreds of them. These objects are known as globular clusters. Here's one of many, many of these clusters available in our galaxy. Now, as the name suggests, these are clusters of basically stars stuck together and orbiting the galaxy in one way or another. But for the most part, most of these globular clusters, or at least the vast majority of them, do have very peculiar orbits, which of course for many years suggested to scientists that they probably came from other galaxies or they were probably formed in some very mysterious ways. And so by using globular clusters, this scientist behind this paper was actually able to relatively accurately predict where some of these globular clusters came from and how all of this then sort of resulted in the formation of our own galaxy. And all this is of course based on the idea that the Milky Way had a very, very violent past. It very likely uh, absorbed a lot of different galaxies, possibly hundreds if not thousands of smaller galaxies, and all of them together created the shape we know as Milky Way today. But there are only some of the larger ones we can sort of predict and see. In other words, some of the smaller galaxies that the Milky Way absorbed probably disappeared forever. We'll never really be able to tell that they even used to be there. Now here's the picture of actual global cluster, this is M80 that you can see um, from I believe it's Scorpius constellation and it's about 80,000 light years away from us. And for many years scientists have always speculated that the global clusters are actually the leftovers of these dwarf galaxies that combine to form larger galaxies. One of the best examples of this is from the very well known Sombrero galaxy. This is one of the most beautiful and also one of the easiest to see galaxies out there. And even though it sort of looks really calm, like nothing is happening here, there are thousands of global clusters and very recently scientists even discovered that this is a result of major collisions that happened in the past. Way, way more than collisions that happen in the Milky Way. So essentially the number of global clusters in some sense suggests the number of collisions the galaxy may have experienced, especially the global clusters that have peculiar orbits that are not aligned with the plane of the actual galaxy. We've also seen a lot of global clusters and individual stars connected to these so-called stellar streams, and we know that these are also the leftovers from various dwarf galaxies that were sort of slowly stripped away by the Milky Way's gravitational power. So all of this evidence suggests that global clusters are directly related to the potential dwarf galaxies that the Milky Way is made from. These are basically kind of like the Lego blocks that we can then try to use to analyze what collided with what to create our galaxy. And so the scientists behind this paper discovered that from the approximately 76 various global clusters that he was able to analyze, 
all of them could technically be qualified as five to six different collisions, major collisions. In other words, our galaxy may have experienced five to maybe six different very specific and very major collisions that then created the shape that we know today. And the first such collision happened between the early Milky Way and a relatively massive, probably the most massive dwarf galaxy known as Gaia Enceladus, more than officially known as Gaia Sausage. So Gaia Sausage is actually something we've discovered not so long ago, and we even were able to identify what seemed to have been its core, basically the actual nucleus of this galaxy. This is the global cluster known as NGC 2808. And so a lot of these clusters may have actually been the centers of these smaller galaxies and now are kind of left there orbiting around the Milky Way. This collision very likely happened approximately 11 to maybe 10 uh, billion years ago. And so this was one of the first major additions of mass and different gas and of course stars to our galaxy. It's possible that uh, after this period there were a few smaller collisions, but nothing really uh, that major for at least a billion years. About a billion years later, the next collision happened between the so-called Sequoia Galaxy or FSR 1758. Today this galaxy is extremely difficult to see and it's basically covered by dust. We've actually discovered it by accident like so many other things. But it also introduced a lot of matter, a lot of stars and a lot of different global clusters that are still found in our galaxy. This followed by another galaxy known as Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. This is a galaxy I've briefly talked about in one of the previous videos. And the so-called Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy that we also discovered not so long ago is also responsible for making the Milky Way sort of rippled and wobble a little bit. I've talked about this in one of the previous videos. So in other words, all of these galaxies that collide with the Milky Way, their leftovers are still there, still kind of causing a lot of different disruptions, while at the same time changing the shape of our galaxy even today. The fourth galaxy is unfortunately actually invisible, as in it's probably not there anymore, or maybe it existed a long time ago and just disappeared, or it's really difficult to see. But the scientist behind this paper, because he's Australian, decided to name it Koala. And the reason why he decided to name it Koala is because, according to him, this galaxy was moving really, really, really slow, and so all of its stars and all of its global clusters ended up orbiting in a relatively similar sort of orbit as the rest of the global clusters and stars that existed in the Milky Way. Now, we're not entirely sure what happened to the galaxy afterwards, but it could have been completely absorbed by the Milky Way's disk. And the last collisions and the last global clusters are represented by these so-called Helmi streams, which are just some of the many, many different stellar streams that exist around our galaxy, representing the um, basically stretched and disrupted galactic shapes that no longer exist, but used to be in orbit around the Milky Way. Now eventually this all will settle and create the shape that's familiar to us, but for now, as you can see, this is all really, really chaotic. And as a matter of fact, all of the assumptions that the scientists had about these events, and uh, some of the assumptions actually do agree with other scientists as well, is that all of these events happened relatively early, about 8 to 11 billion years ago. And then eventually, the galaxy had at least 7 billion years to stabilize its shape and create the disk that it has today. Now, there were actually a few more galactic clusters that were results of much more energetic collisions with smaller galaxies, and also a few more galactic clusters that he couldn't really attribute to anything, but for the most part, these five major collisions were quite easily attributed to these five specific events. And um, this would definitely explain not only how our galaxy became so massive and so large, but also explain the existence of a lot of other shapes in our galaxy, including, of course, the uh, stellar streams, the very difficult to see dwarf galaxies, and the multitude of other objects we've discovered around the Milky Way in the past few decades. So there's actually a lot of stuff orbiting the Milky Way, and most of it, if not all of it, is a result of a collision between a smaller galaxy and the Milky Way that essentially absorbed what seems to be like a few dozen or possibly even a few hundred different galaxies. And today we know that it's far from being done. A lot of other galaxies, including Large Magellanic Cloud and Small Magellanic Cloud, have already slowly started being absorbed by the Milky Way. We've actually detected streams coming into the Milky Way from these two galaxies, and um, it seems that in a few billion years they will be also gone and leave nothing but a few global clusters behind. And the other major discovery from this paper is the estimate on how much mass and how many global clusters were probably acquired during these early collisions. And it seems that even though possibly only about a billion stars remain in the Milky Way from these early collisions, 
overall it seems to have acquired most of the global clusters. And it also suggests that maybe the global clusters are actually one of the few actual objects that can remain for many many billions of years completely intact and not fall apart even following a major galactic collision. So this could be a tool that we can use in the future to discover more about other galaxies out there. But not all galactic clusters were captured, at least 11 that he identified were actually made in the Milky Way. This means that one day we could actually even establish how many global clusters a galaxy is supposed to have, and then by using the number of galactic clusters, try to estimate how many galaxies were absorbed in the process of forming a certain galaxy. Anyway, it's a really interesting study, it's worth reading, I'm posting the link for this in the description below, but on that note that's really it. Thank you so much for watching, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe support this channel on Patreon, maybe subscribe, and maybe consider buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt to help support this channel. On that note, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.